All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we are going to be reviewing Cold Snap, book number four in Mark Cameron's Arliss Cutter Alaskan Mystery Series. Perhaps you've seen my reviews of Open Carry, Stone Cross, and Bone Rattle, books one, two, and three. Well, now we are to Cold Snap. Before I get to the review, though, I want to make an announcement. Myself and Mark Cameron will be doing a Zoom meeting sort of discussion with the King's English Bookstore Monday, May 9th. 2022 around 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time um, and that'll be online and you guys can join and, and, and see the discussion that me and Mark have um, we will be have discussing Mark's books maybe my books maybe Alaska I mean we both both me and Mark are from Alaska in fact I wearing my doll sheep t-shirt this is a painting I did back when I was just getting out of college with my art degree, I turned the painting into a t-shirt, of course. But that's a doll sheep painting I did. Story for another time. Let's talk about Cold Snap now that I've got the um, announcement about me and Mark Cameron. I will leave a link in the description of this video where you can press the link and join the discussion when it happens. So, what's Cold Snap about other than the recipes for Grandpa Cutter's oatmeal-friendly cookies? I think it's friendly. Oatmeal-friendly cookies? You know, I, maybe I should look that up. Oatmeal energy cookies! <laughs> Same thing. His Grandpa Cutter's oatmeal energy cookies. It makes There's recipes in every one of these stories. Makes me wonder, has anybody ever actually cooked these recipes out there? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're full recipes written down. And I um, wonder if anybody's ever taken the time to make these out there in the world. Drop me a line if you have. Let me know if this stuff is any good. Grandpa Cutter has got a lot of recipes. So this has got a prologue where Arliss Cutter is a boy nine years old in uh, somewhere in Florida. The swamps of Florida. He's with his grandpa. And his grandpa's teaching him life lessons. That's about what the prologue is. Now we jump up to um, Arliss Cutter up in um, Dutch Harbor. Uh, a Russian... Um, he's uh, there's, there's a Russian ship and it's got them things on it that shouldn't be there. Um, Arliss Cutter and Lola Tariki, um, his, his uh, fugitive task force um, underling. Um, Arliss works for the fugitive task force. Lola Tariki is sort of his right-hand man, lady, person, right-hand person. And um, they are on a ship in Dutch Harbor. Well, another thing that I love about these books is since I grew up in Alaska and it's been you know, it's been a while since I lived there, actually. But when I start reading these, it just takes me back in time. You know, all the names and terms that are familiar to a lot of Alaskans that don't make a lot of sense to Utahns or because or, I live in Utah now or anybody in the lower 48. Alaska's got its own sort of vernacular. You know, it's just ni nice to hear words and, and terms and the, to just hear the names of cities like Fairbanks and Dead Horse and, and Live and Good. Or, to, or hear, to hear the word sourdough as it refers to a mountain man or bush plain or um, the north slope or ice fog or snow machines. Even just something simple like snow machine rather than snowmobile. I'm like, if someone says to me, hey, I was on my snow machine, I'd be like, you grew up in Alaska. If someone says to me, hey, I got a snowmobile, I'm like, I don't even know what a snowmobile is, but it sounds lame, and a snow machine would be way better. So anyway, there's a mystery tied to um, Arliss's past involving his brother, 
Ethan. But that's not the main plot of this. The main plot of this is actually the Fugitive Task Force. Arliss goes up to um, Dead Horse, which is up by Prudhoe Bay. It's way up in the top of Alaska. It's a long ways away. Alaska's got some remote little towns. And I've been to a few of them, especially up in the Brooks Range when me and when with the doll sheep hunting, which I mentioned in uh, Bone Rattle. Anyway, I could just talk about Alaska forever. Not even mention the book. But we're up in Dead Horse and Arliss has to bring these four fugitives back down to Fairbanks via bush plane. So he hooks up these four fugitives onto the bush plane. One of the things I like is just the little bits and pieces of law enforcement insider information that Mark Cameron throws in here. Like one of the inmates is whining about he needs to, he can't be cuffed behind. Police officers always cuff people behind. They cuff their hands behind. It just is. Whenever I watch a TV show and I see the officers cuff people in the front, I'm just, oh my God, my, my teeth start grinding. I just want to shout, don't do that. They're going to escape. They're going to strangle you. They're going to take your gun. There's going to so many things that people can do if their hands are cuffed like this. Sure enough, in every TV show where people cuff their hands like this, bad shit happens. And I'm like, if you'd have just cuffed them in the back, you could have avoided this entire episode of nonsense because that's usually what happens is they have to cup them in front otherwise they the bad guy can't escape and then we don't have a tv show about an escaped guy mark cameron knows law enforcement always cuffs in the back every inmate 90 percent of inmates always whine about that like, don't cuff me in the back i got a hurt shoulder i got a hurt back i got hurt this i can't be cuffed in the back just hoping that they'll get a cop that doesn't pay attention and cuffs them in the front. Well, Arliss Cutter is confronted by one of these inmates. Cuff me in the back. Don't cuff me in the back. It hurts my shoulder. It hurts my shoulder. I've heard that so many times. But it's all a play. It's all a game. It's just a way for the, you to not do your job. If you do your job right, you cuff them in the back anyway. Even if you have to take two handcuffs and string them together. Because there's a lot of big guys. They literally cannot stretch their hands all the way back to be cuffed. So you have to, but you still cuff them in the back. Or you put waist chains on them. Or there's a bunch of other things that you can do. I know I've belabored that point, but it's important because it lets you know that Mark Cameron has been around law enforcement long enough to know and to hear the inmate games and to see the criminal games and to see what felons try to do. And unlike the TV shows where the dumb cops just cuff in the front, Mark Cameron still has Arliss Cutter cuff the guy from behind. Anyway, they go up in the bush plane and... Um, there's two plots going on. Lola Tariki is searching for a serial killer in Anchorage. So we've got all of that gruesomeness. And so serial killings are seriously gruesome. Arliss Cutter is escorting these four inmates via bush plane to Fairbanks from the North Slope over the Brooks Range. I mean, it's just a... It's a Alaska. It's like it's like trying to fly somebody over the top of Mordor. I mean, there's just swamps and jagged cliffs and mountains and tundra and bogs and stinky bogs and grew animals that will kill you. Spiders the sizes of bears. You get what I'm talking about. It's just the type of landscape you want to just fly over the top of and not have any part of. Well, he notices that the plane starts to go low. And he's like, God, why is the guy not... Well, the, the pilot is actually wants to check on his buddy who's out, who has a cabin in the middle of this wilderness. And he just wants to fly. He wants to buzz by the cabin just to see everything's okay. Well, when they buzz by the cabin, they see that not everything's okay. They can actually see that his buddy is being chased by a grizzly bear. Not only that, but his buddy is up in a tree and the grizzly bear is looking and he's like, oh my God, I'm glad I flew down here to see this because I've got to go save my buddy. And Arliss is like, whoa, hold it a little bit. Let's, let's slow your roll. We got 
four inmates that we're supposed to be escorting. We can't just land in the middle of the wilderness to save your buddy from a bear attack. But the pilot has already landed by that point. And, um, well, that's when the shit show starts, as you can imagine. Because now Arliss Cutter is not only um, fighting four unruly inmates that he's got, a, but he's got a, a bear, a grizzly bear, and the Alaskan elements. And that's where our story goes. I mean, I'm not going to give any way more of the plot than that. It's just, um, does Lola Tariki figure out the serial killings? Do they have, do the serial killings have anything to do with one or more of the four inmates that are on that plane? That is now stranded in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness with Arliss Cutter. It's a great book. I Actually, the, the, the plot of this one really intrigued me quite a bit because I've been on bush planes. I've flown over the very landscape that these characters are flying over. Remember me, uh, yeah, doll sheep hunting is in the Brooks Range. Um, so I just pictured everything, in, everything that was going on in this book. I actually had a crystal clear vision of how it was playing out. And Mark Cameron just does a great job of throwing in all of those little delightful Alaskan tidbits that only people from that have lived in Alaska would even get. He's also got that the way of just throwing in those little other tidbits about law enforcement that only if you've worked in law enforcement would you ever um, even sort of pay attention to. But the fact that he's doing both in the same stories is just dynamite with me. And so I give Cold Snap another solid. I think it, I think I might have given every single one of these books a 10 out of 10. But they absolutely 100% deserve it. 